today's tutorial I thought I'd return to doing a landscape. Having done quite a number of texture tutorials recently, I'm kind of feeling the urge to go back to doing the landscape. So as always, I just need to explain that I'm using the app Procreate. If you want to use the exact colors that I'm using, then you can go into Procreate and you can actually type in the hexadecimal codes that I provided in the description and you'll be able to recreate this palette for yourself and then you'll be able to follow along and hopefully end up with something that looks pretty much like I'm going to show you. I do provide the color set as a downloadable palette on my Patreon page for those people that support me over there, but you don't need to, the, the free codes are down in the description anyway. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using the airbrush brushes, probably the, the medium and the soft airbrush as a general rule. I wouldn't get too hung up about the types of brushes. You can use different brushes. I would say that generally it's quite a nice idea to stay consistent with it. So if you are using more of a textured sort of painterly brush, then maybe use that throughout the whole piece. I'm probably gonna use the airbrush for the whole of this painting. So I'll start with the soft airbrush actually, because I'm going to start with a softer background color where I'm fading in the sky. So I've got a color selected here. I've got a range of colors for the, the sky and the reflected sky that's in the water because the scene I'm going to do is a sort of misty water scene with trees reflected in the water. And the lightest color that I'm going to use is this color here. So I've got the opacity turned up and I've got the airbrush. You can just fill this and you can actually change the background color as a layer but it takes no time at all just to paint it in, so I've decided to do that. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is go along to the slightly darker blue, so I'm working backwards on this particular color palette. I mean, you can put them in the other way if you prefer to see them that way around. I'm just gonna turn the opacity down a bit. Now, in terms of the exact percentages, it doesn't really matter too much. You can see I'm just going a bit less than halfway, and about halfway there. You can just sort of trial and error, error it yourself a little bit. I can't really give you a percentage on the brushes every single time that I change them because these videos could end up quite long as they are. If I start doing that at every point then we'll end up with a three hour tutorial and, and honestly I think most people get bored. So what I want us to do is I want to create a lighter area in the center. Some of it you won't see but I definitely want to create the effect that's getting darker up towards the upper part. So I'm going to move along to another color. Maybe turn the brush size down a little bit. Turn the opacity down a little bit too. Turn it down a little bit more. I can always blur these together using the Gaussian blur effect and that will help create an even softer appearance. I think I'm going to do some slightly darker colors for the, the water. The sky itself is going to remain a little bit lighter. So I'll start to block in the water as well, but I probably will apply more of the darker blues for the water itself. So maybe I can go up to a little bit higher with this. Move along to the next one. And I'm really going to start adding some of the darker blues for the water. So it, it is going to be the same kind of color scheme as the sky that's going to be reflected in the water, but it's not going to contain as much light. And remember it is reflected light, so it's not going to reflect all of it. If you find that at this stage your, your your lines, your transitions are not particularly smooth, that's fine because you can always adjust that with the uh, Gaussian blur effect, which I'll show you after I've completed doing this. I will I will show you how to do that. So I'm having the darker blue here at the bottom. Turn the opacity up a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna go back to this blue. It's not the darkest one, the next one along. I'm gonna turn the opacity down and the brush size down slightly. And I'm just going to add some, a little bit more of it into the top of the sky here. I want to just get a little bit more of that color at the top. Not as much as the bottom, like I've already said, but just a little bit more than I've currently got. Okay, so I'm reasonably happy with the, the fades in and out there, but if, if you're not happy with what you've got so far, you can go on to the adjustments, go on to the Gaussian blur, and you can simply slide it along until you're happy with the, the right level of blur. So it just softens the, the fade in there. To be honest, I'm gonna leave mine without the Gaussian blur. I'm quite happy with the fade effect. I don't mind some of the slight transitions here because if you're dealing with water, you might get some slight sense of ripples in the water anyway, some movement. So it's not an entirely sort of glass-like mirror. That's generally the effect I'm going for. But if it has some 
disruption there in the water, I'm not too bothered. I guess maybe the sky should be a slightly smoother blend. Um, and if you really want to just control blue in the sky, you can go onto the selection tool. I've just done there. Complete the loop, then go onto the Gaussian blur and just blur that section in. In fact, I'll do that. I'm happier with that effect. Okay, the next stage of this painting is that I'm going to create another layer. So this layer is going to go above the previous layer. And on this layer, I'm going to create some background trees. Now, I've got different colors here. I'm going to use this middle color, which is the kind of palest gray that I've got there. And I'm going to use that to start to put in a layer of trees that are going to be slightly more distant. So I can adjust these. If I end up putting them in the wrong place, it's not a problem. I can adjust them because they are on a separate layer. But to begin with, I'm going to turn the brush size down. In fact, I'm going to switch the brush for this. So I'm going to go to a medium. The soft brush is too soft. I'm going to go for a medium brush for this. I may use the, the harder brushes for the more foreground trees because I want them to be a bit sharper. But for the background trees, I don't want them to be soft, but I think medium brush would be more suitable. I need to turn the brush size down. I think what I'll do to start with is I'm going to create a band of trees. So right in the center there, I'm going to create a horizon if you like. So imagine this is the land the trees are growing on. I tend to introduce quite a lot of mist, so you won't really see much of this, but I guess it's important to know where the trees are growing from. So maybe if I turn the opacity to that down somewhat now, and the brush size down, so it's quite it is, I mean, I said I wouldn't go into percentages, but I guess just to give you an idea, I mean, on, the, on this particular brush, which is the, the bigger of the brushes, because we have some small brushes here, I tend to just stick in these, it makes it less complicated. I'm on the medium larger brush. If you turn that really way down to sort of one or two percent, that's going to be the appropriate kind of size for the, um, actually maybe a bit more, maybe like three percent, between two and three, and you're probably two. That's going to be a good size to do the sort of tree trunks of these trees in the background. So I guess to be like pine trees in the in the distance. Some of them are going to be bigger than others. I'm just going to get a range of lines in to begin with. There's going to be a lot of them, so they're going to be different heights. Some in the foreground, some in the distance. Just get a variety in here to begin with. So you can alternate between small brushes and bigger brushes just to get a, a variety of different sizes and thickness in there. Okay, so I'm going to start working into some of these trees now. So they're going to be sharper at the top and then just sort of move them left and right as you come down. I'm not going to be overly precise about this. They are going to be background. I may even blur them out just a little bit just to make them slightly more subdued. We've got the pressure sensitivity of the Apple Pencil too. That's going to assist in creating a sense that some might be more foreground, some might be more distance. So it definitely is not all about the opacity of the brushes. It plays a part, definitely, but the actual pressure that you apply with the Apple Pencil is going to make a massive difference too. So I'm just going from left to right here just to create a sort of balance of branches and foliage. If I'm not happy with that, I can go back over it again and just fill out some of the areas. You'll have a lot of overlap of trees in certain areas, so you're going to get quite a lot of density in, to the point that I probably won't see the bottom of any of the trees. So like I say, just swing sort of left, right, right, left, and just keep moving it backwards and forwards. It's going to be more important, this technique, for the more foreground trees, but even for the background, it's good perhaps to get some of that practice. Some of the trees, you might get more of a, a left, right, and there's all the branches seem to be pointing downwards, as I'm showing you here. And then on other trees, you might get more of the branches that swing more sort of upright. Seems to have a different quality of branches depending on the individual tree sometimes. But having a bit of a mixture is always a good idea. Just remember, I don't want any of the gaps down in the lower section. I'm just going to work across the whole scene and then I'll show you what to do next.
So I'm really picking up the pace now. I'm getting a little bit more confident in that technique. So I'm just swinging left, right. And I think I prefer the kind of upward feel of the branches. Just occasionally I do some that are go more pointed downwards. But if I start at the top, start swinging left, right like that, and then get sort of larger as we get more towards the bottom. I can always go over it a second time. And then at the bottom, I'm just filling in, blocking in some of that area. So this type of effect is quite time consuming. There's quite a lot of detail to it, but I think it's the kind of detail that will pay off at the end of the, the painting. There's gonna be techniques that I can show you after this that is really gonna save you time if you want to have shortcuts and techniques. But sometimes you just got to spend a bit of time really putting in the groundwork, creating the texture manually. As you can see, there's a good variety of texture now working across the piece because I've done it by hand. And quite honestly, it really doesn't take that long. It just, you know, you need a little bit of patience, that's all. I, th I think for this section, I'm going to really create a denser area of trees. So I'm only going to get a suggestion of the texture at the top and then I'm just going to fill in this area. Okay, uh, I'm just going to move along here. If you notice now that there is a sense that I can still see the original line that I put in there because I've not added enough in this area. So all I have to do is turn the brush size up a little bit and just sort of smooth in that line so I no longer see where the trees were growing from. So that's going to do for the first stage. Now, what I'm going to do at this point is really use a shortcut. And all I need to do is duplicate that layer then I'm going to go to this tool here, the arrow here, it allows you to transform. I'm going to vertical flip that section and then just sort of drag it down into this section. You'll notice that it's really useful for creating that reflected version. Now I'm going to do something to manipulate it to make it look slightly more blurred out. But first of all, you just need to place it. I don't want it going too far down. I want to have enough room for reflections of the more foreground trees here. So I don't want them all going all the way down here. And also you'll notice that that gray doesn't really look right when it has a darker blue area. It ends up looking lighter than the blue background. So you don't want it that low down. So about here seems appropriate, looks right. And then what I can do is I can go onto these different adjustments, go onto motion blur, and I can simply move that along just a touch. If I go too far, it's going to completely demolish the reflection. It won't look correct at all. But if I just experiment a little bit, I can just move it along a touch. And it's just created a sense that there's a slight movement in the water, just disrupting that reflection. I can also do the Gaussian blur. In fact, I'm going to do it the opposite way around. So I'm going to start with the Gaussian blur, I think. Blur it slightly. And then I'm going to go to the motion blur and do that on top of it. And I think that's the best kind of level of effect. I think when you get the foreground trees and their reflection, their reflection perhaps won't be quite as disrupted. But for this background element, I think I'm going to have it slightly more disrupted, slightly more 
softer focus and then motion blur on top of that. But we're not talking huge amounts, just enough to subdue it a little bit. I'm going to create another layer and I'm going to stay in this color palette range and I'm going to choose the slightly darker gray. And now I'm going to start placing in some land here. I think it had been a bit too much with that. I want to um, have it really narrowing. I want a smaller version of it really. And from this island area, I'm going to then start uh, having trees growing on it. And in fact, I'm going to move that whole area slightly downward. Not much, I just want to bring it slightly down. But that's fine, it's on a separate layer, so you can make these adjustments at any point. Once I start adding the trees on, if I'm not happy again, I can move it back up. But I just feel at this stage, I want it slightly more down. So I'm going to do similar to what I was doing before with the trees. So I'm gonna turn the size of the brush down and I'm going to start building in some trees that are more foreground. Now bear in mind, you're probably not going to get the big trees on the edge of this. They're more likely to be larger in the center areas. There's going to be a little bit of a sense of distance in these, but not massively. It's only a thin area of land that these trees are growing on. Okay, so I'm going to pick one and I'm going to start really adding some detail to this. Now this is going to be a little bit more precise than the, the background trees, but still you don't have to spend too long. I'm just creating a sort of swinging motion left to right, doing it perhaps a few more dots to represent more foliage. So I don't want it like it was in the background. I didn't care if it was more of a line like this, but for this one, I'm doing more of a broken texture left and right. So it looks like more fragmented branches and foliage okay i'm going to move on to another tree and like i was saying before sometimes you might get the branches that are more pointed upwards and i'm going to start showing that on these trees now so some of these branches are going to be more angled up compared to the last one. Maybe that's because they're newer branches and they're lighter at the top. And perhaps as they go further down, the, the bigger branches, maybe the gravity is making them move more downward. So again, as it gets further down, you'll find that the, the trees sort of merge in together, so you get a kind of blocked in areas. On this particular set of trees that I'm gonna have definitely more gaps so you can see through to the background as well. So it's not gonna be anything like as dense as the background set of trees. It is gonna be dense in certain patches, but there's gonna be more gaps too. So you can probably hear I'm doing lots of dashes and dots. It's the kind of thing maybe you need to do when there's no one else around because it might actually annoy them. Again, they're blending in at the bottom. You can have some shrubs and bushes and low-lying branches that all seem to blend in together a little bit more at the bottom area here. But you can see, definitely more gaps. And those gaps will become more apparent as I do more layers of the picture, because I'm going to introduce a mist that goes behind and in front of those trees. So when we get some lighter colors coming in there, it's really going to show the fact that there are some gaps.
maybe on the edge here we just get some suggestion of new things growing on the edge just break up that that line there you don't have to get too bogged down in detail sometimes just the suggestion of something is enough I'm just going to work across now I'm going to create another layer, but this time I'm going to put it behind that particular layer and I'm going to use one of the slightly warmer colours here. So I want to have a sense that there's some light coming into the scene, so it's going to be creating a variety of different hues and some of those hues are going to be warmer colours where the light actually hits it. So you're going to get some greens coming in there as well as the, the kind of silhouette colours. So because We've got a variety of pressure. Some bits are going to allow some of this warmer colour to permeate, to come through. It is a layer underneath, it's important that you do that, just so that it feels like there's light coming through the trees from behind. I could always add some on the top layer as well, but I think to begin with, I just want to have the light feeling like it's coming through the trees. So I'm going to concentrate the effect of it more on this edge. I don't want to overdo it. I can also use the other, more of a green colour. Really not too much of that though. What I'm going to do with these two layers is that I'm going to merge them together. Once they're merged together, I'm actually going to reduce the, the size of them a little bit. I'm just going to want to make them a little bit shorter, I think. And I might move the whole thing upward just a little bit. The beauty of having things on layers is that you can adjust that as, as you go, decide what works best and then move it around. So I think having done it now, I'm happy with it a little bit higher up. Duplicate that layer again as I did before. Go to this transform, vertical flip it and move it so that we have another reflection in the water. I'm going to adjust the size of the reflection. Often you'll find with the reflections you get a, a sort of condensing down of it, maybe a shortening of the reflection itself. Just need to make sure that it's lined up quite precisely there, okay? So you may notice <clears throat> there'll be some areas of the reflection that don't quite line up and you can quite easily fix that, just erasing sections where it doesn't seem to line up as well as it should. Although I'm going to start adding mist into this area anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. I'm just going to use some of the similar effect that I was doing before on that layer. So I'm going to apply just a little bit of Gaussian Blur to it, just a little bit of Motion Blur, but honestly not very much at all. I want it to be relatively clear as a reflection. Okay, so the essential effect is there, but I'm going to start enhancing that overall effect now with some mist and extra sort of light colours coming into the, the scene as well. So I'm going to create another layer and I'm going to put this behind, for now, these trees. So it's not behind the reflection and it's not behind the back the uh, background trees it's just behind the the main trees and behind the reflected foreground trees if i go onto my color palette again 
I've got a range of warmer colours here now because I'm having a warm light coming in. Imagine maybe it's it's uh, sunrise in the morning, so you're getting some light entering the, the scene and it's a warm light and it's starting to catch the mist, the early morning mist and illuminate it somewhat. So I'm going to start with probably one of the sort of middle colours. So I'm going to go for this middle section. I might not use them all, I've just got a good range of colours here just to give me options. I'm going to turn, in fact I'm going to check on my brushes. I'm going to go to the soft airbrush, have it quite small and on a low opacity. So I want to start building this up quite gradually. So as I was saying before, I'm happy for it to go behind. This is what I want for this particular effect. In fact, I'm going to turn the size of the brush up slightly. It's on a very low opacity. I want to create some patchy mist that's going behind this area. So the top edge of it is really quite broken. It's not going to be a solid edge of mist. It's going to be lots of broken points, which it picks it up. It's quite fragmented at the top edge of the mist. I'm going to move on to another color. I'm going to move to a brighter, version of the colour and I'm going to start having it really starting to pull together towards the bottom and be less fragmented at this area too. So like I say, keep it quite fragmented at the top and as it comes down, it settles down, you get more and more of it all joining together and it becomes more solid. I'm also going to introduce it into this area too, so it's going to start going just a little bit here. I think what I'd like to do is also have the mist coming over this side, but I'd like to keep it cooler because there's mist being illuminated, but perhaps the warmer lighting is only affecting this area of the mist. So I can go onto my cooler colours, select the, not the white, but the paler blue. And maybe I can have the mist going through some of the gaps still in the background, perhaps in this section too. So it merges with the warmer areas. It can go into the background and maybe all the way in the background here as well. If I decide that's too strong, I can always go to the slightly darker blue and go over it. So as I was saying before, some of those gaps now are really going to be more important because you can see the mist through those gaps now. Okay, so I'm going to return to the warmer colours. I'm going more to this direction now, just to add a bit of a variety of tone to this mist. I really want to get a sense that there's some warmth coming through there. Okay, so I'm going to move to another layer. This time I'm going to create a layer, but I'm going to put it on top. So it's going to go in front of these areas. So I'm going to stick with the warmer tones that I've got, maybe turn the size of the brush down and start to add some of that mist into this area as well. So I'm going to alternate between the different colours here, having a sense that it's disrupting and the mist is more foreground, more important than the reflection because the mist is lying on top of the reflection. So if it disrupts and it goes over the top of it, that's absolutely fine. Again, I'm going to move on to the blues. I can start adding some blue mist coming into the effect. So I'm going to have the, the mist sort of moving across the water a little bit. So I can have it in sort of bands, keeping it patchy. 
It's a very low opacity, so I'm building it up gradually, keeping it textured. I'm doing a straight line, I'm not doing one movement, I'm keeping it kind of blotchy looking. Okay, I'm going to move to my warmer colours again. I'm alternating backwards and forwards now, just trying to see what looks right. As you can see, sometimes there's not a strict order to things. You can just look at things, reassess it, go back to it, keep adjusting it until you're happy with it. I think I want to introduce more of that warm colour in here as well. I really want to exaggerate that there's, there's more warmth here than anything else. Just ramping up the, the brightness in this area, I really want to get a sense there's a lot of light here. Okay, I'm going to use another layer now. I'm going to use the darkest colour that I have because I'm going to create some more foreground elements here, like twigs and branches that might be sticking up. Uh, out of the water. So every time you create maybe a sense that there's a branch that you want to have emerging from the water or sticking in the water, what I suggest you do is you go to the layer that it's on, duplicate it, then transform it, flip it, move it so that it's immediately reflected in the water as well. Merge the two layers together now, create another layer and do another branch and keep doing it that way. Duplicate, go onto the transform, flip it vertically. It's going to be trickier once it's small because it doesn't like being moved around as much, but there you go. Go onto the, the layers, I'm going to condense them all together and you can carry on working like that. Create another layer. I'm only doing a small detail there. Don't need to do that one, but I'm going to do perhaps another branch or two here. Again, duplicate the layer, transform it. I'm going to merge all those layers again. Okay, another layer. Let's keep backwards and forwards with this process. Create more branches. I'm not going to bother doing it for all of them. I can do some of them by hand and that's fine. So I want a really nice big branch here just to cut across, just to contrast nicely with the background, I think. And then I just need to do the reflection of it in the water as well. So that's the general effect. I'm just going to spend just a very short amount of time fine tuning. Maybe the background, I could almost see it working better if I just blur it ever so slightly. Not too much, but it's just going to help really focus the, the more foreground elements. Now, if I was zooming in and out with this painting, I could probably get a lot more detail into the piece but I just wanted to create the overall effect so you could see how you could build it up. If I was spending time making it um, something that I really wanted to put in a frame or exhibit, 
then I would I would zoom in and get the super detail done, get all the accuracy absolutely as I wanted. But in terms of the overall effect, I'm quite happy. Like I say, zooming in is another story, but the tutorial is not based on the, the absolute fine detail. It's about getting the effect and in those terms, I'm quite happy. I'd say a massive thank you to those people that are supporting me over on my Patreon page. If you want to go and check out that link, there is um, a link in the description. Please make sure you press the bell notification button on the next to the subscribe button. Really appreciate any support you can give. If that's just sharing the video, letting other people know that my channel exists. Really appreciate everything you can do. Thanks for watching. Catch you back here again. See you later.